Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you again on a Twinkle Tip Friday. It is time for Twinkle Tips. And not only that, it, there's a lot of really interesting things that have just landed in the most recent two versions of x -Lights. Now, in version 2024.14 uh, and 2024.15, both of those releases are packed full with a lot of great things that I want to share uh, three of the things that are in these releases. One thing that I really haven't talked about yet, so I'm going to get right into it. So stay tuned. We'll get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. I have a few different uh, effects here that we're going to go through. We're going to go through the, uh, the Shockwave effect. We're going to touch on some things that have been added into Shockwave for probably a year and a half now. The other thing is, is that there are updates to the fan effect and to the galaxy effect. And that's what I want to talk about to start off with. I only want to hit on these things here, but uh, as of the 2024.14, uh, uh, Scott Hansen, he added in something called scale to buffer to the fan effect. And it applies to the radius one and two and allowing a percentage base to be uh, enabled so that you can percentage wise create a fan effect that if you apply it to another uh, prop that percentage wise it's going to similarly match it depending on the shape of the buffer or the shape of the overall uh, model but also the other thing that he did um, was add the exact same thing to the galaxy effect just this other release that was opened up and uh, uh, put online yesterday so uh, I want to get to these and, and then there's another special one a bonus that I'm going to throw in at the end I'm do I'm going to look at the shockwave and the reason I'm looking at the shockwave is because where did all of this start from where where did this come from so if you use the shockwave effect and I've been using shockwave now for eight eight years nine years ten years but the problem with shockwave has always been it doesn't scale when you copy it and you paste it from one effect uh, from one model to another now I'm gonna grab my little preview window here and you can see this here is the house preview and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of situate this a little bit so you can see it better here but basically what you see is the exact same uh, default version of the shockwave effect going on top of all of the matrix all of the mega trees and all and on top of the mega tree star so why is it important that scaling is necessary on some of these effects well if I go ahead and I take this shockwave here on the big matrix now I've went in and I set radius start radius to one your end radius radius two is 50 notice whenever I copy and paste that exact same thing and I put that on that that 50 size radius onto our smaller garage matrix it's far less dense the, the, it's a the, the matrix is a smaller prop it is only 50 wide by 24 tall whereas this uh, big p10 panel is 128 wide by 96 tall the uh, the p the p10 panel versus the low definition matrix and the reason that they're different is because they're different sizes and x lights never scaled the shockwave effect to fit on to either of these equal equally 100 percent there were there are some workarounds if you're working with groups and and what i specifically mean is if you have a group and i'll, I'll go ahead and do this and i go to let's go to the snowflakes we'll go to the snowflakes all the snowflakes and i'll go ahead and put a shockwave over here okay and and you can see it going on these and i'm going to come over here and i'm going to do per model default so if you notice the shockwave looks like it's growing out and it's getting almost to the edge of these larger snowflakes or these smaller snowflakes here the higher depth but they're not it's not going all the way to the edge here for this one and so one of the things that we could do if we're in a group setting is we could go into overlay scaled and what overlay scaled does is it scales the it finds all of the buffers 
in all of the props and it says, hey, here's the biggest one. Let's use this to scale with. This is as close as you can get this shockwave to look equally across multiple models in the same group, even though the grid size, the actual physical pixel size by size is different between all of those different snowflakes or spinners or whatever other items are. All right, so what we had to do in the past was we had to take the time to look at the different versions of, uh, of the effect. If I was sequencing, let's say, on the big panel versus the small panel, if I was sequencing on the big panel, I would look at what looks good for each of these. So if I did, let's say, copy and paste a, and in this instance, we have uh, uh, radius one here and radius uh, two set at 50 on the big panel here. If we go down to the smaller panel and we do the exact same thing, you notice how it blows over. It goes over the size, but on, this, on the tighter, high density pixel panel, you can see that it's stretching out and it's going even further, but the effects appears to be done after a certain amount of time. And that's because of the size of the buffer that is created on those two different panels. On the garage panel, the garage panel is 50 wide by 24 tall. So if you, if you shrunk this down to 50 by 24, this panel would be created and uh, it, the effect would go across it the exact same way as it is on the garage panel. But because there's more pixels in the P10 panel that's above in the center of the house there, that's 128 by 96 tall, it has more room to grow. So it has the ability to uh, be sized specifically for which prop that you're putting it on. Now, what was the addition? The addition was an option on the options tab. Now, if you take the time and click on the options tab, you're going to see this thing called scale to buffer. It is not natively checked. Uh, and perhaps it should be, but I, I'm not worried about it. it. It is, it's an option. It's a sequencing option. So you're responsible for clicking the little checkbox. But when you do this, and, and if we, if we delete this off of here, uh, and we do zero to 100, we just set the radius of one, uh, to one and radius two to 100. Now we've got with that checkbox when we're selected the scale to buffer, we have a, a shockwave that goes from the center outward and it exactly hits the edge of those bounding boxes. And they're not bounding boxes, they're just that's the end of the model. So Xlight says, hey, where's the end of the model? We'll call that 100%. Now this is whenever I can say, oh, let me copy this. And we'll go down here and we will paste it, control V. And now we can see that X lights is scaling to the edge of the box, whereas they're both starting at the same time and they're both ending at the same time. And you can tell that, and here's the difference, here's the difference. This one, the, the one on the smaller matrix is going much faster or appears to go faster whenever it's not scaled. But if we go in and we can bulk at it, you can go to options, you can uh, select the tab, right click, bulk at it, checked. And now at 50%, at 50% because this says radius one is one, radius two is 50, that's 50% of the size of the buffer. It's going all the way out to what that 50 percentage base would be and it's ending itself there. Now that's super, super exciting because now if you are looking at the whole buffer size that you have and you say, well, I want this to be equal across all of them like they are with the snowflakes like I showed you earlier, this certainly does help uh, if we put this into the group instead of using overlay scaled Let's just do per model default. Let's go ahead and do scale to buffer, and let's see what we can get for the default. Now I bet you they're going to be they're going to be a little bit more the same, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and play with it. Uh, let's go uh, 75. Well, let's go to 100 percent, 100, and let's make it a little thicker because that's uh, not really that thick. There we go. So here we go, and they all look like they scale. So this is something that you guys definitely want to be playing with going forward. Now, why is this helpful? Well, because guess what? The fan effect has been the exact same, uh, has had the exact same issue for the past, well, ever since Gil wrote it. Um, at least I think Gil wrote it. I think Gil wrote the fan effect 
to import the uh, SUP files from Superstar Sequencer, the uh, the fancy trees that uh, Holiday Sequences does that we have on our website. And you can see here how this pinwheel looks way larger, or this fan looks way larger and then, than this one does. And these are identical to each other. These are exact copies. So the, the copy would be um, radius 1, radius 2, 1 and 10. And, and then here is here it is on the other one, radius 1 and radius 2, 1 and 10. So what, what we have to do, what we end up doing is if we play with these just a little bit, we see, oh, here's radius 1 and radius 2 at 50, and that's on the big panel. If we put that on the smaller panel, you can see, hey, you can hardly see that the arms are curved when they're up above, when they go up over into the outer reaches there of the matrix panel, but whenever you look at it on the P10 panel, you can definitely see the entire fan effect. So this is why, this is why whenever you go in and you say, hey, go ahead and use the scale to buffer option, and this gives you the opportunity to set a, a start radius and an end radius that are equal, and they about take up the same amount of space that it typically would on that same buffer size if they were one to one. So obviously these panels are different sizes. Everybody built, uh, our matrix panels, our houses, uh, none of our houses are the same. None of us have exact same pixel counts for everything. So it's, it, Xlights is doing the very best that it can. And this option to make it a little bit more equal so whenever you do use the copy and paste function when you're sequencing really makes it nice and makes it way easier to get a much better fluid overall look. The next thing here is the galaxy effect. Now the galaxy effect, and this again, huge thanks to Scott for doing this. This is the original galaxy effect, the basic default. When you grab it, it gives you a radius of one and a width of five, and that's your beginning. And this is on the big P10 right here and on the small one. Uh, and you go to the end and your end radius is 10. So we started at one, we started at one radius, we end, we end at 10. And then we go with a width at the beginning of five and a width at the end of five. So that's our base default version of the galaxy effect. Now, if we change, if we change the uh, end width or the end radius to 50, where as opposed to 10, you can see, look how much further out this is going, where it only looks like the effect is doing so much in this specific area. So. Whenever you do switch over and you start playing around with the option on the option tab, scale to buffer, and you apply that to both of them, knowing that the end is 50, so these were 50s, this was 50 here, this is 50 here, both of those radius are 50, we went back here and we have radius of 50, and it's the exact same effect. The only difference between these two is that this one here is bulk edited, because you can go in and bulk edit, you can go to options, hover over it. If you have both of them selected, you can right click bulk edit and check or uncheck. So scale to buffer is a new thing. It's here to stay in these three effects. I don't know that um, I don't know of any of the other effects that really need something like this, but this is super helpful for a lot of you who are trying to get the same look. And uh, a huge thanks to Scott. Thank you, Scott. Well, now I want to switch gears and I want to move on to a different effect that has received a pretty nice update. And I, I really have to hand it to, uh, his name is uh, Brian Crawford, and I'm going to bring over the X Lights notes uh, on the release notes that is Mr. Side Lights himself, single strand effect, uh, additional, add additional fade types. Uh, Brian was in our Zoom room. He, he joins us on Tuesday nights and just a pleasant guy to just hang out with, chat with. And Brian has really gone out of his way. Now, at first, at first, I'll be honest, he showed this to me, that something he was working on. And uh, he, he wanted to add it in to do something different with the single strand effect, which by all rights, the single strand effect is probably one of the most powerful effects in x lights. But he came up with the idea to add different types of fades to the single strand effect. So I want to walk through just the basics of this. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole ton of time on this, but I want to give you like the, the really great bits and pieces just of this additional fade. See, we used to have a box that said, a checkbox 
that said right right above here it said 3D fade or 3D and what that would do is that would turn the tail of the of the single strand uh, effect it would turn the, the tail end of it to fade and so what he's done though is, is he, he's changed it from um, he's changed it from from the head to add in three different types more and that's from the tail head and tail in the middle and I'm going to click on each one of these here and show you all three of them so here is the matrix panel we actually can do this right here on the matrix panel um, this is this is what it, it would normally be the old 3d version and he has called it or it's labeled from the head so from the head the head is solid the tail is faded and that's your 3d that's your normal 3d so when you open up all your old sequences it's probably going to if the 3D checkbox was checked, it's going to default to from head. So that's the basic. Now, his addition from tail means that instead of the, 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 the front end being solid, now the front end is being faded and the solid is on the back end. And this is very, very similar. And I'll go ahead and throw it on here. I'll put, I'll put the, um, the spiral effect down here. Whoop. Um, I'll put the spiral effect and do 3D and see how the front end of the spiral is 3D faded on the one side. Well, and then the solid part of it's on the back end. He's done the exact same thing. He's reversed the fade between those two different things. So you can see the fade to the front as the leading edge. Now, the next one is head and tail. So basically what he's done is something very, very cool and it mimics an effect that is already in another uh, X lights effect, which is the pinwheel effect. If we click on the pinwheel effect, you have a 3D inverted. So between these two, this is a really interesting option where the center is faded. There's also in in the color wash, see, because I get uh, sidetracked, but I want to show you. You put a color wash down here, and you do a horizontal fade, and you go to reverse fades. And it's the same thing so so Brian really stretched out and came up with some very interesting things that could be added into X lights now another thing that I think is going to be a little bit of fun to play with is using this along with adding some blur in so I think I think if you add some blur you have have a little bit of blur now everything kind of gets blurred and I think that's gonna that's really gonna be a lot of fun to play with whenever we're sequencing now uh, the the last one is the middle and here is the middle version uh, you have number you have you have I put two chases on here I made the chase size at 19 here's 33 just blew it up a little bit you could have as many on there as you want there's three of them and basically what what Brian has done is he's taken the center is still solid but the lead in and the end the tail end of the uh, bar that goes across the screen the strand is now faded so you have a very interesting effect which mimics once again the color wash where you have your horizontal fade and uh, you know you can play with this here I'll go ahead and do that see see there we go so that that's kind of the same thing that's that's a that, that's exactly what he did but he made it so that it's built into the effects and that's really really cool well guys that's everything I have for you this week I really hope that you enjoyed some of these great options if you did give us a huge thumbs up down below don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and hit the subscribe button because you never know when we're gonna put something out on the PPD YouTube channel number of things coming up this week is gonna be another other PPD webinar we have something special planned if you have suggestions for the webinar please put those in the comments below it's very important that we produce the content that you're really looking for as a matter of fact I got some great suggestions last week I think we're gonna have a really good webinar this coming up week and you are all welcome to join us every week Tuesdays at 8 30 p.m. Eastern time we have the zoom room open the PPD zoom room links are down in the video description below so you can always join us and if you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where you get one amazing sequence each and every one month. We do a brand new one to the store. You get a choice of three. We call those the triple play sequences. And those sequences you get to import into your layout. We spend all year sequencing a new song every month. We spend all year programming your show for you so you never have to do it yourself. Guys, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. If you want to get cool shirts just like this, go uh, head on down here. The link's down in the video description for our awesome 
uh, Titans of Twinkle, and this is our Pixel Me This t-shirt. This one's so soft. I love this shirt. Love this shirt. All right, guys, that's everything from me. Thank you for joining me. It's been wonderful having you. We'll see you next week, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, and goodbye for now.